Okay, welcome to part two of my Amiga restoration video. If you watched part one, I went and I created a power supply and uh, got a RGB to VGA board working with the Amiga. And we figured out that the gray screen that the eBay seller said that he saw wasn't really gray. It was only gray because he saw it through the mono output. It's actually a green screen, which we know a green screen is probably the memory or a CIA chip that we had to look into. But I have yet to actually open up the Amiga, so I'm going to go ahead and open it up, and we're going to see what it looks like inside. A few moments later. Okay, I've been probing around here. I don't know exactly where I left off on the last time I filmed, so I'm just going to explain what I've been doing. Um, I checked uh, my voltages with the multimeter, just going around different chips. Uh, all the voltages were fine, 5, 12 volts, um, and the, the board doesn't look damaged at all, so I'm not going to try to go through the traces of the board. And as you can see, we have a green screen, which could be the CIA chips or the RAM, so I don't know too much about the CIA chips, so I decided to... Sorry, I keep on feeling for to see if there's heat differences or not. Don't know too much about the CIA chips yet, so I decided, well, I'll start probing at the RAM. So I started probing at the RAM. Um, only one chip is actually outputting a clean signal. That's the output of this one chip. All the other ones are outputting garbage. So then I started checking the address bus, and as I was checking the address bus, all the, you see, it's high. It tries to go down low, but it shoots up high instantly. So I'm thinking that that's wrong. I'm not an expert of how this is supposed to be, but I'm thinking that that's wrong, and I'm thinking that the address bus is just pulled up. You see, this one's the same way. It's high, and it tries to go down low, but it goes back up high. So I got out the schematic, which I was trying to print out the schematics, but my printer took a crap, so I have it on my phone. And the address bus goes through this inverter chip, I, I don't know if it's octobuffer or what, chip U34. That's where the address bus goes through. So, it's supposed to invert the signal, so let's go and uh, just probe chips on U4, U34. So, line one of the address bus goes into, well, it comes out of pin 16. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eighteen, seventeen, sixteen. And that's the same thing we had before because that's going straight to the RAM, the address bus. Its input is chip four. And that almost looks like the same thing. and see what the other inputs are. Four, eight, and six. So four, six, eight. Like the output of eight is 12. You see, none of that looks good. So that's on the input of this chip. The data just doesn't look good. Let's try 11. Eleven, that's input. You see, I'm not an expert, but that doesn't look good. So the enable is 1 and 19. Yep, 34, 30. That's low with a lot of noise on it. And 19, oh, there is no 19. That's like six volts. 
So let's trace that back even further. So all that's coming from DRA E through zero. DRA E through zero. And all that's coming from the Angus chip. Pins 43 to 51 on the Angus chip. So another thing we can do, we can pro let's probe this input again. And since we know that that's going straight to that one, two, three, four. I guess we can push on the Angus chip. Oh, we had a little difference there. Now the Angus chip is getting warm. Oh. Let's try rebooting. Okay, Pat Angus gets a 7 megahertz clock signal on pin 38. So the problem is I don't know what the... Why is it flaking out like that? Well, that's not good. So I'm not touching anything. Let me make sure my trigger's set. I'm not touching anything, but the clock is a little flaky there. So that's where I'm at. I'm going to go and probe around some more. Okay, so I decided to just go ahead and remove Paula because remember I said earlier Paula had uh, a lot of corrosion. Or it was uh, the, the leads weren't shiny off of Paula. So I pulled it out, cleaned it out with some electronics cleaner, and uh, uh, took a brass brush and filed the teeth down or the the leads down and put it oh yeah and then I uh, I turned the computer on with it um, with Paula out just to see how the computer would react and it did the same thing went up to a green screen so then I thought well the CIA chips are known to be culprits too so I pulled them out and I when I pulled them out I noticed and I'll try to zoom in here that the sockets the sockets for the CIA chips both of them are not dual wipe sockets it only makes contact on the inside it does not make contact on the outside while all the other sockets are dual wipe so I don't know if someone replaced 
those sockets at some point or what have you. But I kind of don't like that. I kind of want to go ahead and put dual wipe, wipe sockets in it uh, before I move on. But then I decided I'll go ahead and, um, you know, power up with the CIA chip out and see if it behaves any differently. And it does. It doesn't output anything at all. So this CIA chips definitely were doing something because it was outputting green before it was out. So I think I might go ahead and put these chips back in, but I think I might, I wouldn't rule out that these sockets are bad. Just the socket looks crappy. So that's where I'm at. Okay, I decided to put the CIA chips back in. When I put it back in, we got back to our green screen. So I decided to look up the CIA chips in the prints and I noticed uh, a pin called CS. So I probed this one. And uh, I'm getting a weird clock now, but before I was getting a nice clean clock. And then uh, I probed this one and I was getting nothing. So I got a clean clock on one, that on nothing. So then I trace it back, that's being fed from U37, which is a 74LS32, which is right over here, U37. So the one's being fed out of pin three, which I'm getting a weird clock, but like I said before, I wasn't getting a weird clock. And then the other one's being fed on pin eight, which is tied up high. Now the interesting part is pin three is being, it's a, it's a NAND gate. And pin three It's getting high, weird, and then weird. Before it wasn't weird. We must be on to something because before it wasn't like that. And then pin... You see, that's going crazy. So something's going crazy. Now, the inner, what, but what I was getting at is both of those NANDs, so each chip's fed from a different NAND, but both of those NANDs have the same exact input. So, but the inputs within the chip are different. So either this chip is bad, or we have a broken trace somewhere. So I want to look more into that. Okay, so this is the chip that I'm looking at. According to the schematics, one and four are supposed to be tied together, and that's the input to the NAND gate. Two and five are supposed to be tied together. That's input to the NAND gate. And your outputs are three and eight for the two chips. So I have my meter on continuity one and four. Nothing. And then two and five, we have continuity. So apparently the problem is we don't have continuity between one and four. So I'm going to have to take this board out of out of this out of the heat sink and let it go from there. Okay, so we're getting a little farther. Um, I misspoke in the last clip, <laughs> as always. Um, what I found out was I took I took this board out and I looked at the bottom of the trace. Um, two. And five are tied together. You can see, actually, you can actually see the jumper of them tied together. Uh, one and four, I thought they were tied together, but when I was look, there's no jumper in it, no trace jumper in it. But when I was looking at it, I found out that they are actually fed from two different signals. Uh, but the way the line diagram's drawn, and those two different signals come all the way come directly from Fat Angus. So then I was probing around Fat Angus and I found out Fat Angus is not getting its clock signal or 
Fat Agnes, Agnes is getting a very dirty clock signal. It's garbage. It's not a good clock signal. So I believe the clock is also tied to Gary. And it also goes to input a U33. And that clock is garbage. I think that clock is fed from Gary. Um, so that clock is in, in between Gary... Fat Angus and U33, and I think Gary actually is what feeds that clock. And Gary, I noticed, is stone cold compared to Paula. But I'm going to have to do more research uh, to see where that clock gets fed from. I'm just assuming that it's fed from Gary. Okay, so I'm, I'm a bit of an idiot. Um, it turns out that that clock signal is good. It's just... I'm an idiot because I accidentally slid the probe to 10x instead of 1x. So when I get a 1x, we do have a nice good clock signal on all three points. Let's see here, it's pin 3. And 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. There it is on 40. But still, the output for Agnes, Agnes gets real hot. You see, Agnes, the output for Agnes is inconsistent. So even though that looks like crap, when you go to the output of that buffer, you get a nice, good clock signal. And in this one, we're getting clock in. Nothing. And nothing. Okay, that's 5 volts. That's 5 volts. But the output is 5 volts. The only difference between those two is the input. So this input from Agnes, let me make sure, one, two, three, yep. That's the input from Agnes, it's like two and a half volts, and it's crap. And this one is crap too. Okay, you see now it goes back and forth. So now we're not getting a good clock on that one CIA chip. So, pretty much I don't know what I'm doing. The only thing I know now is that I think the problem is the fact we're not getting clocks on the CIA chip. And that clock is derived from Fat Agnes. And uh, I don't think... I think Fat Agnes is not doing so well. The only thing I can think of is people complain about these sockets are bad for Fat Agnes. And I can see that. Let me move you in there. I don't know if you can tell, but this side of the socket looks a little bowed out. But uh, I think I'm going to stop the video here and upload it, so maybe I can grab attention of people who are familiar with troubleshooting Amigas. And maybe they can offer suggestions on what the problem is. So, thanks for watching.